Alright, it's another super late night uh, isopod care video. Um, as you can see, uh, this one is on armadillidium. We suspect it's frontorostre, um, but we're just calling it armadillidium uh, Croatian giant. Um, this is a larger armadillidium species from, uh, what do you think, Croatia. I had um, these guys imported from Europe um, a few months ago. Um, only a few. Um, um, I think I maybe started out with 10. Maybe. Um, maybe not even 10. Um, but let's get to showing you how they look. Um, the reason why we guess that they're uh, front to rostre is because of um, their little. Well, if you know what Fronterostre look like, they've got, like, this little rhino horn type thing on them. Let me see if I can pick one up and see. Hi. Hi. So, they're big boys. But they've got, like, this little rhino horn type thing on the very tip. of Kind of like Nisatum, but different. I wish I had my macro lens. I'm having a difficult time focusing. Um, but they are little tanks. Quite large. Um, almost as large as uh, uh, Gestroy. Um, actually, I'd say just as large as Gestroy. Not quite as large as Granulatum. Um, there's one in here that's really big that might even be bigger than a Granulatum. But the bulk of them are not uh, quite as large as Granulatum. Let me see if I can find them. No. And they've got like this kind of um, slaty, bluey, greeny color in the in the right light. I'm not sure how well it's showing up in uh, with the lighting that I currently have. Show me your nose. Come on. Maybe better from the side, a side profile of their nose. Let me see. Yeah, you can kind of make it out a little bit. Um, but, uh, yeah, a kind of slaty, it's like, it's like a... It's a blue-green kind of, like, undertone that they have. It's kind of weird. Um, but, uh, enough of describing them. The care, honestly, it's like every other armadillidium you've ever had. Um, I keep one side on the moisture side, one side on the drier side. Uh, they like veggies of all kinds. Um, carrots, squash, um, not quite as big a fan of the, uh, the proteins, although they, they will nibble on them, they like bee pollen quite a bit, but bee pollen's kind of expensive, and I usually save it for my rare species that um, won't eat much else besides bee pollen, like my uh, my Cory Um They pretty much only eat bee pollen, and he just does not want to leave, which is cool with me, you know. My Cory Didarum, or not, not sorry, Cory Didarum, Pseudoglomerus now. Um, they pretty much only eat, uh, apples and bee pollen. But, enough about those. Maybe I'll do a care video about those later. They're behind me. So, I might get around to it eventually. Apologize for the car noises. I like to do these videos outside, um, because inside my house can be loud. Um, but outside can be loud too. So, um, but you can see these guys are tanks for armadillidium. They're pretty large. Um, what was I gonna say? Um, oh yeah, care. Um, alright, our time has come to an end. Care, um, moist side, dry side. Um, a lot of people have been asking me, um, how I keep isopods that, like, get drier, and how do I keep them dry without having them, like, desiccate? And there's basically two ways you can do that. Um, oh, hi. Um, there's basically two ways you can do that, is you can have deeper substrate um, that's a little bit loose with like lots of leaves in it, that way they can get down in there, 
And he's just going to stay balled up like that, isn't he? <laughs> They're so funny. Um, so you can have deeper substrate that's looser. Um, that'll help them, like, kind of bury themselves down in there. Um, and then you could also, I know some people that mix, like, long fiber sphagnum, or I've even seen people, like, mixing those, like, uh, water crystal stuff that people used to use but aren't using as much. You mix it into the soil, and that way you'll have kind of, like, a, a little safety net for, you know, checking your stuff out. Um, I know some people, they have, like, really large, uh, collections, or they go away a lot, and can't necessarily check on them all the time, and, um, that's a good solution for you if you're one of those people. Um, it works pretty well for me. Um, what was I gonna say next? Um, as far as breeding of these, um, they are very prolific. Um, let me see, I thought I saw some babies under here. Hey, no. Where are you guys? Yeah, there's some down in here. Yeah. Tons. These guys breed uh, quite readily. They take a while a while to get started. Um, they take a good while to get mature. But once they mature, um, they have slews of babies, which is pretty nice. Um, it's a nice payoff. Um, that's kind of how it is for a lot of the bigger ones, like, uh, like granulatum, too. Granulatum's kind of the same way, like... For a while, you'll be, like, frustrated, oh, I don't have any isopods, and then they'll just, bam, uh, kind of just spring up on you. But, uh, yeah, quite an easy species, um, an overlooked species. Frontorostrae, in general, is kind of an overlooked armadillidium species, because they're, like, a lot of people are like, well, they're just, like, vulgar, basically, and do they have a point? Yes, but, um, for the true addicts, who, uh, we want to catch them all. Um, I think that they're a nice addition. Because they're bigger than Vulgare. Um, by a good amount. And they're just cool looking. I really like their... Um, if you check out my Instagram page. Um, I'll put a link in the description. Uh, I take pretty good macro photos of... Not like super professional. But they're still pretty good. Uh, macro photos of all of my stuff. And, um, if you scroll and look for the one for front to roster, you'll really see what I'm talking about when it comes to their little, um, nose protrusion thing that they have. And I just think it's kind of cute and endearing. You know, some people don't think it's that big of a deal, but, you know, I see where they're coming from, but I, I, I really like them. I think they're overlooked and really cool. Not that many people bother to get them because they're like, oh, it's just a slate isopod. But they're not. They have a really subtle kind of color to them that I think is really beautiful in the right light. Plus their cute little nose thing. So yeah, and uh, yeah, these guys are doing quite well. This is a, uh, a smaller box with not that much substrate, but I check on it pretty often. And um, if you have a lot of stuff layered on top, like oak bark and leaves like I do, um, it tends to not dry out as quickly. Also, these guys are not super duper shy either, which is kind of nice. Um, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, ventilation. Um, ventilation, I think, for these guys kind of depends on how moist you're keeping them. If, you, if you're keeping your guys on the moist side, definitely have um, more ventilation to compensate. Um, but, that being said, uh, they're not super duper picky. Wow, there really are a lot in here. The little meal moth larva. Um, I will take care of him later. I crush him and just leave them in here for them to scavenge on. But, uh, yeah. Kind of running out of time here. Wow, this was a longer video than I thought it would be. So, yeah, that's Croatian Giant. Um, definitely pick these up. Um, I'll have some for sale since I have tons of babies in here. Um, I'm going to be at the Pleasanton Reptile... Not the Pleasanton. I'm going to be at the Vallejo Reptile and Oddities Expo on July 20th and 21st. And at the San Jose Reptile Show, um at the uh, Santa Clara County Fairgrounds on August 24th and 25th. So I'll have these th for sale there. Um, you can also order from me online. Um, you can find you know my website just by Googling Cycloptic Exotics. And you'll find my blog or my Facebook page or whatever, and we can get in touch. Um, I don't really like to get in touch via YouTube comments. 
Um, so please don't ask. Um, but yeah, good night, guys. It was a nice chat.